Today I'm talking about basal cell carcinoma or BCC for short. These are the most common type of skin cancers and although they are the least dangerous as they don't spread around the body, they can be a real nuisance, be unsightly, bleed and crust and if left untreated or undiagnosed for too long, they can erode deep into the tissues causing disfigurement. It's important for everyone to be aware of BCC, especially if you have light skin like me and most of my patients here in Ireland. Hi, I'm Dr. Finbar. I've been a family doctor for over 20 years. Now I specialize in dermatology and on this channel, I help you to learn to love the skin you're in. So BCCs arise from the base of this top layer of skin known as the epidermis. And these cells grow uncontrollably and cause basal cell carcinoma. Thankfully, BCCs grow slowly and most are curable and cause minimal damage when they're caught and treated early. I hope this video can help you learn to detect a BCC early as that's when they are easiest to treat and cure. When it comes to diagnosing BCCs, doctors like me look at the suspicious lesion, consider its characteristics and may also use a tool called a dermatoscope. Now, this is like having a handheld MRI scanner. Helps us to see into the skin surface and look a millimeter or two deep into the skin in more detail than can ever be seen with the naked eye or a simple magnifying glass. In some cases, your healthcare professional may suggest that they take a small piece of skin known as a biopsy to send to the lab to be examined under a microscope to confirm the diagnosis before planning on the best treatment choice. And I'll talk more about that later. BCCs are due to the cumulative exposure to sunlight over many years and as such they are increasingly common as we age. So it's no surprise then that we find them mainly on the head and neck area as that where it gets the most UV sunlight. There are a few different subtypes of BCC, but I'll not go into that in this video. Your healthcare professional who's trained in skin lesion recognition should know these subtypes and help you decide on the best treatment for those on an individual basis. In the following cases, I'm about to share images of what everyone can see with the naked eye, but I'm also gonna include some images of what we can see through the dermatoscope. I'm including these dermoscopy images for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it gives people an insight to the tools that healthcare professionals use. And secondly, because a lot of doctors and other healthcare professionals watch these videos. Now, if you are a healthcare professional interested in learning more about skin lesion recognition, you'll find links in the description below to my course on skin lesion training and on dermoscopy. So be sure to check out that in the links below. The appearance of BCCs can vary from person to person and from body site to different body site. However, when you have seen a few, you can quickly start to recognize them. Those people with darker skin types tend to get darker, more pigmented BCCs. As I mentioned earlier, my patient base here in Ireland are mainly light skinned, as you can see from the images that I'm about to show you now. Okay, let's go through some BCC cases. First up, we have a lesion on a man's nose. This is a skin colored popular lesion, which has been scabbing and bleeding on him. And he came in for assessment and I had to inform him this was a BCC needed to be surgically excised. Next up, we have another typical BCC slowly growing on a lady's cheek. Again, can scab and bleed. Next up, we're gonna show some of the dermoscopy image. Now this is the pigmented BCC that I was talking about, more common and darker skin types. And then we have another popular BCC. Look now at the dermoscopy what doctors can see with their dermatoscope, which shows all those blood vessels in the middle. And remember that because we see that quite frequently. This one also has some pigment in it. And then we're on to another lesion just below a man's eyelid and it uh, scabs and you can see the crust over there at the far side image. I've removed that when I put my dermatoscope on it and you can see that's why there's some bleeding and this is a common presentation of bleeding on the pillowcase. Again, this lesion here in a man's uh, temple, if you had watched my video on seborrheic keratosis, you may think that's what it is, but when I put my dermatoscope on it, again, look at these blood vessels and the pattern, they're like little red rivers, beautiful images. And then this one's a lesion below a man's ear. He came to me and said, I think it's healed now because it had been previously scabbed. And this is a common presenting complaint. We see the lesions are healing, scabbing, healing, scabbing. And you can see again from the dermoscopy, there's those blood vessels that are very sharply focused in the middle. This is a, on a slightly darker skin type. And if you had to watch my video on hemangioma, you might think this looks like a hemangioma, but again, putting the dermatoscope on it reveals these blood vessels and other features that are not visible in hemangiomas. This, another BCC, this time on the upper arm of a lady. 
again you see the dermoscopy shows blood vessels very thin river like areas and these are skin colored lesions for the most part can have rolled edges at times this one's slightly different again it was a bcc on a man's just below his lip at the fold of his mouth and this one was crusty again wasn't a seborrheic keratosis seborrheic keratosis grow on the outside of the skin this was starting to penetrate in deep so that's a few cases, hopefully you got value out of that. I hope that you enjoyed those selection of cases and you may have noted from those images, most BCCs are occurring in older people. Now I've seen quite a few BCCs in people in their 20s, especially if they have light skin and have had a lot of unprotected sun exposure or used sunbeds or tanning beds. So UV protection is crucial to prevent BCCs. You've noticed as we move through these cases that there are dermoscopic features that are similar across the different lesions. They have a similar pattern, those blood vessels that I was talking about. Now, one of the jobs of a healthcare professional is to train in pattern recognition and learn how to recognize various patterns throughout medicine. AI or artificial intelligence is also very good at recognizing patterns and it's already proving to be very useful as a tool to help diagnose different skin conditions from their dermoscopy and macro images. And studies are now showing that it can outperform even expert dermatologists. Now, I welcome the wider use of AI in medicine to help us to do our job more efficiently and accurately. I don't think AI will ever replace doctors. However, it may turn out that doctors who use AI to help their practice will replace doctors who are not making use of the benefits of AI. I'd really love to know your opinion on the use of artificial intelligence in medicine. So, Put that in the comments below and I'd love to see what you think of that. Let's turn now to the treatment of BCCs. There are several options depending on the site, size, the depth of the BCCs and these treatment options can range from topical creams like Effudex and Aldara to surgery and radiation therapy. The goal of treatment is to completely remove or destroy the BCC while preserving as much healthy skin as possible. Surgical methods can vary depending on the site and include the highly specialized option of Mohs surgery where the BCC is removed in thin layers and the pathologist is on site at the time of the surgery and can examine the BCC under the microscope to make sure that it's all been fully removed before planning on the closure of the wound. More conventional surgical procedures involves the surgeon marking the skin lesion out at the time Time. and again the dermatoscope can be very helpful here at determining the edges then a little bit extra skin is marked out to make sure that no BC C remains in the skin and a small that whole area is anaesthetized and then surgery is performed and the wound is closed if possible. Other methods of surgery include cautery and curatage of the BCC where it's scraped off and then cauterized and this process is usually repeated several times to ensure that the BCC is fully destroyed. Now treatment options will vary depending on personal circumstances and access to local services. Your local healthcare professional will help you decide on the best option for your specific case. So what are some other signs that you need to look out for to help you diagnose BCC in yourself or a loved one? Well, in my clinic, I've had many men who have come in because their wives have sent them. Why? Well, because they found blood stains in the bed sheets or the pillow and they've chased them in to see me. This is a possible sign of BCC, as I've mentioned earlier, because BCC often becomes crusted or ulcerated and can bleed. I've also had many patients who have noticed a scab or a crusty lesion on their skin that seems to heal only to return again. And this repeating cycle is another common sign of a BCC. So look out for skin lesions which crust and scab in the same area, especially if that area has never been injured. So how can you prevent yourself getting a BCC? Well, it's all about being sun smart here. Wearing UV protective clothing, using sunscreen every day and seeking shade. Most importantly, get to know your skin. If you see something new, changing or unusual, get it checked out by a healthcare professional who has been trained in skin lesion recognition and preferably who uses a dermatoscope. It's always better to catch these things early. You might also like to watch this video on actinic keratosis which occurs frequently alongside BCCs as both are due to cumulative sun damage over many, many years. Remember, you're in charge of your health and every step that you take to care for your skin is a step towards a healthier you. See you soon.